What's up, space people? Welcome to the monthly report. Monthly report! The show where we report monthly. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. And a shout out to my newest patron, David Hall, and my newest channel member, Ray McPherson. To start off our report the right way, in October, the AI team began supporting character traits. So the NPCs you meet will have different levels of comfort, professionalism, and expertise in combat and social scenarios. This will also factor into the NPC crews that you hire for your ships and how proficient they'll be at their assigned tasks. Last month the team also found and fixed more issues related to characters standing on top of usables something I'd speculated they were working on back in September. The ship AI team categorized the quantum travel subsumption task to be considered non-blocking. What in the world does that even mean? Glad you asked. This means that an AI navigation officer in the future will be able to see the need to queue quantum travel before continuing on with another task. A more distant feature, but one that needs to be focused on now. Capital ship combat behaviors were also improved to allow for longer range combat, and turret behaviors saw continued work regarding rules of engagement and missile deterrence. On the social side, AI saw work on the mess hall animations. A bit of a meme for more of the veterans following this project, but the implementation of these activities for AI will go a long way in making ships, space stations, and cities feel more alive. <sighs> even if the NPCs are eating their burritos while standing on chairs. In addition, arcade machines and dancing options are also being worked on to provide players something to do in downtime at bars, habitation areas, and during quantum travel. October saw the refinery deck finished and passed on to the audio, lighting, and VFX teams. And golly gee willikers, Batman, do these decks look perfectly splendid. If you're interested in learning more about how these features progress through the company and why they sometimes might see delays, check out my recent video on the subject either up in the corner or down in the video description talking about features, their delays, and all that jazz. The station docking lobby also saw final artwork begin, as well as a new colonialism archetype of ground structures. And you can also learn more about the different types of architecture that are planned for Star Citizen in this video. Work continued on the cloud city of Orison, including the new transportation method, the Transit Barge, which will move between several different platforms in the area. In addition, the art prototype for the new hacking feature saw its first pass. Yet another profession-related feature in the works currently. Like I've been saying, they're pivoting. We're gonna start seeing more gameplay soon. Art for Pyro's Celestial Bodies has also been completed. Finally, pending one more polishing phase before release, and more work was put into touch bending for foliage on planetary bodies. As for ship art, the Crusader Hercules is close to finishing its final art phase with material and landing gear receiving their final polish. The Esperia Talon and its special iridescent shader which we'll see applied to other ships in the future is closing in on complete with the damage setup being finalized. And the Mercury Star Runner finished, well, just about everything. Weapons Art completed the first pass on the new medical gun, which will introduce team-based medical gameplay to the game next year. A rather important inclusion as the beginnings of permadeath begin to be implemented into the game. Weapon Reticule saw work in anticipation of the new feature in 3.12. This will be important in differentiating weapon types and manufacturers to help you find your favorite combination. New attachments for FPS weapons and the multi-tool were completed as well, so expect to see new scopes, which we've heard about recently, as well as the new tractor beam that will allow you to pull yourself in zero-g and maneuver small objects in zero-g in December. The character team actually worked with the AI team to get started on creating creatures for players to see and interact with on planets, 
moons, and maybe even a derelict space station or two. They also worked on new occupation-focused armor types that will be supporting mining and bounty hunting. We saw this discussed at last year's CitizenCon in great detail, which I later analyzed in a video earlier this year. And I'm glad we're finally seeing those more specialized armors come to the game, which you can keep stored in your ship for the work days. Alright guys, you know how this goes. I'll tell you what I get, and continue to look for good ways to show you what I don't. So stay tuned for all that jazz. The physics team worked on soft body deformation rendering, which could factor into things like characters, creatures, or even new synthetic materials. Progress, as mentioned last month, on atmosphere and clouds continued through October, preparing for an upcoming release into the live environment. And some rendering bugs were resolved regarding distant objects that took up pixel-sized spaces. Little, 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 tiny little spaces. Okay, now we're getting into it. The IFCS system which ships use is being grafted onto other objects which move around in space such as bodies and missiles, which means we may see more accurate physics and the devs may have an easier time tweaking the settings of these objects. Work also went into displaying ship names and serial numbers on the sides of ships. Ship naming was introduced a couple of years ago, but is only applicable to certain ships at the moment. You can check on the ship's status in your hangar to see if you can name your ship. Every ship will have a unique serial number by which it can be identified in the verse, allowing for others to see its history, as well as a name that is only specific to that ship class, such as just the 600i. Ship-to-ship -ship docking for the Constellation of Merlin has been completed, and the feature is approaching finished status. UI to aid the docking was completed. However, the wording here is important, and we'll revisit it later on in the video. The props team worked on the trolley push-pull feature that was unfortunately delayed, but will allow players to move items without picking them up directly. Work was also completed on the freestanding elevator panel assets. This probably includes improvements to the overall system as well as the addition of updating the utilitarian panels to be on par with the more functional high-tech touch panels, which should be a nice little change. Tech animation focused heavily on continuing to improve the head assets in the character pipeline, bringing more high fidelity options into the NPC creator which will allow for tons of variety across faces we will see in the game. The team also worked on some combat animations. Last month, Turbulent worked on the Hex tool. A tool that's going to allow for the recording of org events, inventories, and reputations. A back-end tool that I think is going to be really useful to players when they start to transfer it to the front end of the game. And while the org events and inventory systems are already up and running, the reputation is still being worked on as we've mentioned in previous monthly reports. Remember I mentioned the docking UI earlier? Well, here's where it gets a bit confusing. We see in UI that the artists have developed concepts for the new docking UI. So this could mean either one, they're referring specifically to the ship to station docking UI, which is a different feature than what they were talking about before, or two, the UI we previously talked about was only meant to aid the docking as was written, as opposed to being the full interface. It's interesting. I'll be keeping an eye on the upcoming sprint reports to see which way it might be leaning. New helmet visor and lens system concepts were also created, which you can see some of in recent episodes of Inside Star Citizen.
The VFX team mostly worked on ship-related effects last month, with the Mercury Star Runner being the focus. Weapons effects were improved along with missiles and their trails, and to finish off, signed distance field shield impact effects were also worked on. Something we've been hearing about for years now. As I said, not the densest report, but there's some good information in there. And as I also say, probably at least once a month, these monthly reports are currently the best way to keep track of what's going on in Star Citizen, due to not only being a direct report from each team, but also providing a record of how things are progressing and what we might expect farther out than what the roadmap currently shows. If you enjoyed this summary, well, I do it every month. I also do smaller ones every week, so if you want more progress reports, updates, news, or even cinematics, consider subscribing to the channel. You can also support me if you wish by becoming a channel member or becoming a member over on Patreon. Both of those are in the video description. You can find me on Twitch where we play Star Citizen together every week, testing the game, running events, and showing newcomers the game. We also play other stuff like Halo, Phasmophobia, Satisfactory, and No Man's Sky. You can head straight over there to Twitch, or you can join my Discord server where you can meet up with the other players of the community, plan days to play, or just hang out and wait for us to have a big Twitch community event. Either way, all of that is in the video description below. And finally, if you'd like to win yourself a brand new spaceship in the game, we have ship giveaways every single month. So make sure to do all of the liking and the commenting and all that stuff, and check out all the different ways you can enter the giveaway in the video description as well. Thank you again for checking this video and my channel out. I really appreciate it, and I'll catch you guys next time.